what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep Dell with me through the lecture because I like Dell. When he's finished, uh, come on, Dell. Flags. Okay, good. Uh, Dell's got the flag of St. David and Peter oh, hasn't coloured cool. his in. Right, good. Right, Dell, you're with me through the lecture, so um, we're going to get started in a moment. So um, when I mention, when I talk about Welsh castles, Rosamond, what am I talking about? Oh, you got me there, haven't you? Good. Oh, you're right on the spot. <laughs> I want to hear about Dennis Powys. Uh, I still haven't found it. That's part two. Oh, right, okay. That's not today then. That's not today, no, that's part two. Ten B. Um, Norman. Oh. Um, okay. Okay. Don't worry. Uh, what about you? Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, Peter. Well, uh, Pembroke. Uh, Norman. Right. Not doing well. Dell. Uh, Dol Dolbadan. Dolbadan. We're not doing Dolbadan. We're doing that on the second one, but that's one I would like to hear about. So what we're going to do? I'm going to cut all your mics. Anyone got anything else to say before we start? Nope. Good. And we're going to mute everybody and Dell is just going to be me and you, okay? Dell, it's just going to be me and you in this journey now. So, um, right, good. So what we're going to do, we need to share the screen um, and we're going to get straight down to it. Um, so what can you see, Dell? What can, describe what you can see on the screen so we can get moving. I can see what looks like a manor house. Correct. Well, no. with a tower, with a roofed tower. Nice, nice, nice. Where we're going to go today, it's going to be a bit of a weird little journey. Um, some of the places you may not have heard of, uh, one or two you may have. We're going to look at Joyce Loin. We're going to look at Dolphorwin. Uh, we're going to look at the Fleece on Anglesey. We're going to be looking at, um, oh no, we'll, we won't really bother with Morgrai Castle because I don't think anyone's interested in that one. Um, we're going to do Gwydir Castle. Um, we're going to do Abergwyn Gregin and we're going to do Dinis Bran. All have their wonderful roots um, amongst the princes of Cymru, amongst the lords of Cymru. And that's how we will refer to it as today. Somebody has just joined us and I'm not happy because they are late. So, oh, and they're actually joining us from the States. <coughs> so I'm not going to give them a lot of stick. Right. So, um, okay, then we'll give it, we'll let this one off. Um, is that you, Robin? Okay, he's just connecting. Sorry about this, folks. They take a little bit longer to join us from the United States. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll welcome Robin now. Is that you, Robin? Nice to see you, Robin. So, um, right, we've just started, Robin. So um, um, we, we're um, just into it. So we've got all mics off. So um, we can have a chat in um, the little break. So that'll be fine. So, okay, then back to where we were. So I wanted to um, do something very different. Uh, tonight in in essence that I wanted us to stay away from the Harlarks, stay away from Caerphilly, Carnarvon, um, stay away from Tenby, Pembroke, Cardiff and I wanted to um, not do a nationalistic lecture but I wanted to paint another picture within those various layers that we do find amongst this wonderful land of ours and it's very important to say that we've got a lot more out there than just those main Cadu castles that you all um, take for granted uh, when you visit them. And this, this wonderful building um, is at Abergwyn Gregan, which is North Wales. It's sort of on the road between, um, it's on the coastal road and you're going from Bangor and then you go all the way along the coast to uh, Redland and, and then you go all the way, uh, you can go down to Wrexham if you want. So it's sort of on the coast. And we will look a little bit about this site. There's a little bit of controversy involved with this site. 
but so there's involving Gwydir as well. Um, and hopefully all of these will be located on maps that I've lovingly put together today. But some things can go wrong in lectures and hopefully they will all go right. So the next image that we're going to look at is this one. Um, Del, does this ground plan look familiar to you? Yeah, Bomares. Mmm, no. Um, this is Casteth Morgraig. This is this is a, a rather interesting Casteth Morgraig. And and I do apologise, people. There's somebody else wanting to join us as well, and um, this isn't going to happen next week. Right. Okay. Back to the images again. If anyone else, if anyone else loses connection now and wants to join us, I'm not letting them back in. Right. So this is um, Casteth Moor Greig. Um, this is a very interesting site. Um, and if um, Martin had his um, um, voice on, you know, would shout out and say, "This is Casteth Moor Greig. This is one of those Welsh castles." This is a castle that was not built by a Norman Lord. Well, actually, the jewelry's out on this site, but it's rather interestingly built. So we will look at this in a little bit more detail in a short while. If you look at this, it's a very strange form. Um, it's, it's, a it's around a large open space. Um, it's got um, semicircular towers, D-shaped towers, as we'll refer to them as, and a square tower. Um, and this idea of a square tower connected to these other towers by a curtain wall, a very typical of castles that were built without the aid of the Normans and the English. And this site itself, strangely enough, if all reports have it, was rediscovered in 1895. That's a rather interesting one. Very nearby, you've got Caerphilly and you've got Cardiff Castle and you've got the rebuild Casteth Corch. But this one's being rediscovered in about 1895. And it's very difficult to get access to this site. But let's just move on a little bit. We can actually see the ground plan again and some of the overgrown walls. Lots of these sites um, are forbidding in their ability for you to access them. So, this is rather interesting. This is sort of very similar to my backdrop. Um, I've got a green screen there, and hopefully, you're, hopefully this is working for you, Dell. Are you seeing a nice bit of a castle behind us? I am, yes. Now, that's a rather interesting one, because um, what, what we're seeing there is that the, these, are, these are the nice arches that are very close to the entranceway into... Droice, Droice Loin Castle, Droice Loin Castle in West Wales. It's a rather interesting feature because um, you, you always, whenever you go to a site like this, you say Norman architecture, but it's not. This is native build architecture. Um, and this is rather, rather different in, in the way we step. Um, and there's a, ra there's, a, there's a great sense of majesty when we look at castles built this side of the border before the Normans and the English got to that territory. Um, so if we want to go a little bit step further, I did say we weren't going to mention the Normans and the English much tonight, but I want to do a couple of little bits of comparison to aid us in understanding the difference between a castle um, built by a Welsh prince and a castle built by a Norman lord. So let's keep going. Here we go. This is, this is, this is a, a map that um, some of you will have seen not so long ago when you took part in my lecture that looked at Owen Glyndwr. And that lecture basically said, well, you know, if you, if you ignore all the Norman built castles, you'd still have a number of castles that had been built by um, princes of Cymru, princes of Wales, 
um, and lords of the same land. Um, and one or two, a little bit surprising when you look at, um, when you look at them, uh, you might be surprised to hear that Powys Castle here is actually um, a castle that was originally constructed and founded um, by the princes of Powys. So that's Powys there. You can see that one gently there. Um, we will be looking at Dol Fordwin. That's uh, so a Cadu Kep castle, actually. Um, and we'll look at, um, we'll look at Dinis Bran, rather strange one near Langoflin. Um, any other surprises up here that you may have thought were actually um, Norman build? Krikieth is, is one. Um, we don't actually do Krikieth tonight, but Krikieth is, you know, you always think that Krikieth was sort of built by Edward I, but it wasn't. Um, and, you know, one or two, um, there's, a, there's a lot more Welsh built castles than just this one, than just these ones here. Um, I've mentioned a number of times that Coiti and Ogmore have their earlier origins, their pre-Norman origins. Um, and there are a number in West Wales. Um, there are one or two that are not mentioned on this map from Anglesey. Um, and in, in a main, really, there's a lot of close approximations between, uh, say, Norman-built castles and castles built by the lords of this land. Machen, um, not so far away from Cardiff, for example, and you've got Plas Baglan as well, um, very close to Swansea. But let's move on a little bit further. Now, I think, Del, didn't you mention Bumaris Castle a little while yeah, ago? Yeah, I did. It, this is a Bumaris Castle, Bomaris Castle. This is, this is on Anglesey. As you go over um, the main uh, road bridge into Anglesey, and you go and you keep going right, eventually, when you get to the other side, and you keep going right, you come to Bumaris Castle. Very strange castle indeed. It's um, it's an unusual castle. It, it's built by um, it's built by the Normans. Um, it's one of those castles that is built as the as the ring, as as the network of castles to keep the um, keep those rebels in, keep those Welsh rebels in, um, in North Wales. This is, this is the, a very large castle built on Anglesey by Edward I and Edward I's money. Um, and I'll just men chuck a little bit of Owen Glyndwr in there and why not? Um, lots of these very large castles were captured in the Owen Glyndwr rebellion um, well over a hundred years after these castles had been constructed using um, Edward I's money and so on. Um, they, they were captured quite easily because they were held by very small garrisons and all the Welsh attackers need to do was just to wait for the garrison to go to the local church. Uh, knock on the door and, they're in, and, they, and they capture the castle. This is basically how it was done. We're good at doing that. Um, Harlark's a good example of that one. Um, but again, that's uh, one of Edward I's castles. We don't really mention that again. Um, nice moat around this. And I know Dell mentioned that. So if we, if we look at this in comparison, so we've got a, a Norman English built castle in comparison with this one. Um, now we're going to be looking at this castle in a couple of weeks um, and we're not going to actually mention the name of this castle. It's going to remain a mystery and this is the only castle that you're going to be asked to research for next week's class. Uh, there are names with all the others uh, but it's a, it's a castle built by the princes of North Wales. Um, it's, it's got a circular tower rather than a square tower and this is, this is sort of connected with the rest of the network of walls. One thing I would say is quite tender and quite neat is that I know Rosamond mentioned Dinis Powys Castle earlier on. And when she mentioned Dinis Powys Castle, um, she wants to know a little bit more about that. So we'll be coming, coming back to some of the other castles in a few weeks time. Um, and there's no gateway into Dinis Powys Castle. Um, the princes of uh, Cymru, um, the lords of Cymru, didn't um, like to build gateways. They, they saw the defense of a castle in its big towers um, and a large building like this, a circular sort of um, keep-like structure, that is, which is usually set within the accompaniment of curtain wall rather than um, within the center of a castle where the Normans would have a habit of building their keep. 
completely isolated and uh, we, we had a different way of doing things. Um, and one thing that you will see quite neatly is lots of these um, native built castles um, are in, a, a com in complete contrast to the Norman build ones. The Norman build ones like Carnarvon, uh, Caerphilly, um, you could chuck a couple of the other uh, ones that are built in, in West Wales, for example, Tenby and um, Pembrokeshire. They're sort of on flat plains. They're sort of not hidden in the middle of nowhere. Um, they're not built alongside passes and in strange localities. And that's what you'll usually see about these castles across this wonderful principality of ours. Droysloin, Carrickennan being good rocky examples um, in, in the southern part of Cymru alongside the weird examples um, that are built by native lords and native princes in North Wales and in strange locations. Powys is a, another example of that. Powys is a very strange castle to actually get to. Even though it's been changed a lot by the likes of the Normans, it still has a little bit of weird isolation to it. So, again, we, we go from this example, that's your homework, um, and then we go to this one. Del, we know where this is, don't we? You've got to know this one. Oh, it's Caerphilly. Caerphilly, that's exactly, um, that's exactly correct. Now, this is when we bring in Casteth Morgraig. Some people believe that Casteth Morgraig was constructed by um, by the lords of Senchenith, um, or had been constructed under the orders of Llewellyn the Last, um, and and this castle was a Norman response to that. If that bit of the history is correct, in fact, we don't really know anything about the history of Castell Morgraig. That's an ensued idea. Um, and when this castle was being constructed. Um, Llewellyn, Llewellyn the last, um, um, Llewellyn at Gruffydd, um, wrote to the English king, Edward I, and he said, why are you building this huge castle at Caerphilly? It, it's, you know, um, it's an affront um, to, to my independence of, as the prince of, of, this, of this land. Um, and it kept being constructed. Um, no, the, there was no stop in the construction here. Um, and the powerful lords of the Declare um, and the powerful lords within the landscape did not listen to those princely pl pleas of the last Prince of Wales to stop building here. Again, if you want to compare this again, you can see this massive gateway. You don't really see these massive gateways when we talk about our native build castles. Um, you've, got, you've got various keep like buildings at Caerphilly. But if you want to compare it with this castle, this is Droysloin Castle. Droysloin Castle in West Wales. It's a very interesting, enigmatic castle. Um, and when, you, when you're talking about um, very interesting, enigmatic castles, uh, it's on a rocky outcrop, very different from Caerphilly. Um, it's... Um, it's isolated, it commands a river, um, it's, it's in a very strange location. Um, and this site, the, the princes of Dahaibath, which is the um, princely kingdom of West Wales, um, this, this was one of those castles that, that they built. And, and there's, a, there's the name Lord Rees coming in there but not that Lord Rees Martin, um, another Lord Rees, the Lord Rees of Diabath. I was very surprised to actually see this site. So if you want to compare it again, if we want to move back a little bit, um, if we want to compare it again with Caerphilly, there you go, um, Droysloin, very different. So you're getting a sniff. I like that sniff that you're all sniffing, that there's a big difference. Um, and the reason why I'm using the word Cymru rather than Wales is that Wales, Welsh means foreigner. And being somebody that's born and bred in Wales, by calling myself Welsh, I'm calling myself a foreigner. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm from Cymru. 
But anyway, probably being a bit too nationalistic there. But it feeds into the differences. This is what I want to do tonight. Bit of yin and yang. The whole sense of the, these classes that we're doing, the, the archaeology and history of Cymru, there's a reason for that. It's to try and, it's to try and see a difference between um, the two cultures, the two senses of the land. And there, I do believe, make sure I got this right, yes. The next slide we will be looking at is Joyce Line. So where we're looking at, there's Joyce Line there. Okay, so we've got Joyce Line. Um, we've got Denevor. And not far away is Carre Cannon. That's not actually on here. But Carre Cannon's at a really nice site as well. But it's not on here. Whenever you see maps of Norman castles or castles of Cymru, um, they're never complete. You've always got to put a couple of extra dots on the map. So there you go, Joyce Loin. Um, and the one thing is, um, when we go to Joyce Loin, which we're going to do now, we see something very strange. And what we see at Joyce Loin is a true treat. When I took a group to Joyce Loin last year, it's a very cold day, it was January actually. Um, it, it was this castle on a rocky outcrop co commanding a river uh, and a flooded plain. And you had, to, you had to walk and you had to walk and you had to walk up to this. I think Peter was with me on that one. So you had to walk up this ramp, we had to keep going, you had to keep going, and suddenly you're hit by a load of walls. If you happen to be going over to the left, guess what? A township, a borough, not a Norman borough, but a borough built for those traders that were coming in from the water, a, a borough that would, was built by, for the aristocracy, um, the Welsh aristocracy, not the Norman, but our aristocracy. And there's the castle as well. And there's a circular keep um, and this is, um, this is Reese, Reese Grieg's keep, circular keep. It's not sort of set somewhere else where the, it, you know, within the walls of a Norman, Norman um, defended landscape. It's actually sort of pointing out, looking, looking over the landscape. Maybe that's where it should be. Um, and this was built by Lord Reese, the Lord Reese of Dialba. Um, and we've also got a, a Lord Rees of the Rhondda Valley, but that's another lecture altogether. Um, and then we, then we look at um, Lord Rees um, was, was very much, he was known as Rees Ap Griffith. The, the name Ap Griffith comes in quite a lot, actually. He dies in 1197 and Rees Grieg takes over as, as leader, king, prince of Diabath. This, this princely kingdom in the west of Cymru. Um, now, there's another strange story associated with this site. The princes of Diabath changed sides at the time of the last, um, well, the last but one major conflict in Wales between the Normans um, and um, the, 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 the Welsh, for example. Um, that was... That was when Llewellyn the last declared war on Edward the first um, and that ended in 1282. All castles that were controlled by um, by the Welsh lords, um, by the prince, um, were sort of forfeit, um, except for this one. The princes of Diabath decided to, um, to throw in their lot with Edward the first. Um, the Princess Zadros, um, th those, those who, choo those who ch um, choose um, the enlightened way. So some princes and lords um, decided to um, stay on the side, loyalty to the English crown, Edward I. Um, and a certain Rhys at Meredith um, kept hold of this castle. The only lord stroke prince in charge of a castle in Wales after the rebellion um, or the independence fight of 1282. Because when we use the word rebellion, um, the Prince of, of Cymru um, is a prince um, who pays homage to Edward I. Um, and we're not completely autonomous. Um, but again, 
that'll all come up in the next few weeks. So that big, t this, when, you, when you're down in the valley, down on the um, right-hand side here, you look up and you see a large chunk of this great hall on either side still standing. And I don't think we've got that image. Um, and we'll actually come back to this image. I want to talk a little bit more about that township there. But this is the state of the remains. There's, there's quite a lot there still to see. Um, probably, um, probably a third of the walls are still standing, but it's quite substantial. Um, and like many of these um, native castles, very few have been archaeologically excavated. Where kafili has been excavated, um, Harlach has been excavated. A lot of attention has been made in excavating the Norman build castles. Um, like Swansea, like Cardiff. Um, so we don't have as much data um, in, connected, in connection with, with our princes, for example. Um, and, and it would be great that we, we could have some more information. Do you know, next week we're going to be looking at um, some of the uh, native produced coinage um, of our land. Um, and the reason why we've got very little out there that's been recognized and researched is simply because very few of these sites have ever been excavated. Dolphorwin has, which we'll come on to in a short while. Another little bit of the story. Um, oh, hang on, we've gone straight onto Dolphorwin. Unfortunately, the enigmatic image I wanted to show you, I haven't, I haven't got, um, but maybe I can show you that, that again. So um, what happened in, um, what happened in 1283? Rhys ap Meredith um, sided with Edward I. Um, 1287, he got a bit sick of the Normans and decided to rebel himself, um, having the castle taken off him. Being hung as a traitor in 1292, um, that ends the story. Moving on. So where we're going to go next is there. We're going to look at Dolph Orwin. When I've mentioned lots of um, castles across our land um, haven't been archaeologically excavated, um, Dolphorwin has. Dolphorwin's actually been excavated in more recent years. And that's rather, in, in, that's, um, that's rather important that I say in more recent years, Dolphorwin's been excavated. Because um, Castith Morgrig was excavated at the beginning of the 1900s. Nobody really knows if, if it's a true uh, um, castle of um, Cymru or a castle of the Normans. Um, it was excavated at, at the turn of the 1900s. But Old Forwin being excavated in more recent times um, gave us more of a, um, a, modern, um, a modern image um, of the past, mm. for example. So let's go on to Old Forwin. Again, it's, um, it's sort of near the mouth of the River Severn um, as it goes. Um, and there it is. Um, the castle had not been built with a well, which was a bit daft. <laughs> it ran out of water and the occupants of the castle had had to surrender on the 8th of April, 1277. And, guess, and this, this is typical of a Welsh-built castle. Uh, this was built under the command of Llewellyn ap Griffith um, in 1273. And it was captured by the army of Edward I in 1277. They had no water. You, you, you could think this is, this is Wales, it's always raining, um, but alas, it couldn't have been raining um, when this site was under siege. Um, and it's rather interesting, you've got like this circular tower here, which isn't really a gatehouse, it's, it's a weird circular tower, and this was sort of the entranceway, um, and you've got all these square buildings and stuff and everything's like tight-knit. Uh, very st strange shape to be a castle, but, to be honest with you. But again, the hallmarks of Llewellyn at Griffith, Llewe uh, Llewellyn, Prince of Wales, Llewellyn the last. Um, and, and the thing is, again, it's in an inhospitable location. It's got very large defences around it. Um, and it's a very unique. Um, and when they were excavating it, they decided that they were going to restore the walls as they went along. Um, even, even though this is a um, cadu, um, this is under care of the state, I don't think there's actually an entrance fee to go into it. And it's actually quite an interesting structure. Um, if we want to look at another image of this site again, 
Yeah, you can sort of see the landscape around this. And actually, one, one little bit of an observation. When we look at the couple of images that we've got for Casteth Moor Greig, it's, this is a very similar site to Casteth Moor Greig, not in the way it's shaped, but its position. Um, very interesting. It's sort of, this is on a little bit of a spit, a little, little bit like um, Casteth Moor Greig in South Wales. So let's have another little look. This is a, this is a, a bit of a reconstruction. So you could say, uh, they could say that they didn't actually complete this. So uh, there, there's talk that this could have been used as a bit of a, an entranceway. And there's talk that this could have been used as a bit of an entranceway. But if you go back to this, it's not really, there's not really much of a gate to talk about. And this, this, this would be very similar in the way we sort of discuss the likes of Dennis, Pass, Dennis Powis um, Castle. It's not really... It's not really a major gateway there. It's just a, um, it's just a wall with a hole in it, um, with with a walkway above. Um, I, I think the mindset was with the Welsh princes that if you manage to um, if you manage to get to the gateway of the castle anyway, um, then it's likely the castle is going to fall. So it's pointless having a, a massively defended gateway. Um, and again, this circular tower. Very similar to the circular tower that you find, for example, at um, Droysloin Castle. Um, and again, it's not separated from the rest of the castle. When you look at, for example, you'll know the point I'm trying to make. When you look at Cardiff Castle, there's a circular shell keep in the middle of Cardiff Castle. And, and, and the, there's a bit of a distance between all the walls that go around the outside. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about Norman. This isn't Norman. And you sort of see these, this T-shaped tower. And I mentioned Casteth Cork as well. That it's likely that Castle, Castle Cork was built on a site um, um, that was originally constructed by a pre-Norman lord. And that had the D-shaped tower on it as well. Very typical, again, when we're looking at these native build sites. And when you think about that, it, it's, it's a little bit of a spit. Um, they were planning to do a little bit more. They didn't get around to it. And by um, April, um, typical, isn't it? Big smile on my face. By April um, 1277, um, the castle fell because they didn't have a well. Um, and don't, don't, don't think we're stupid at all, but um, it, it's, it's the type of thing that happens. You don't find many, okay, um, I don't think we found a well at Dennis Powers Castle, put it this way. Um, big smirk on my face. Um, look at, looking again down as well. Um, and this is, this, is the, um, this is the entranceway here, right? And there's no gateway like on a Norman site. Um, it's just an arch. Uh, you would have come into this area, um, into the first courtyard, second courtyard, third courtyard. This is how it was built. Um, and, and it's almost as if they're built, that they're built because I don't think, I don't think the princes of Cymru, I don't think, um, Llewellyn the last actually thinks that the land is going to be invaded. Um, I don't think they want to take a leaf out of building like the Normans. Moving on. Again, that's a little bit of that circular tower. Very similar. This is quite some miles apart from Droysloin, but again, a circular tower, very similar to Droysloin, constructed by Rhys um, Rhys Grieg. Um, and we're actually going to go. Then I, I'm reminded that the the third set of slides that we look at now take us in another direction. And and Martin can start um, thinking that Casteth Morgrai is close. And where we're going to go next is there, Aberfrau. Now, Aberfrau is rather interesting. I don't know if any of you have actually been to St. Fagans recently, but they've reconstructed the Hlis of the Princes of North Wales. The, the, the Hlis of the House of Aberfrau, which in other words, that's the house that Llewellyn the Last was connected to. 
at Llewellyn at Gruffydd. Anyone that's anybody is linked to the, um, the Royal House of Aberfrau, including the likes of Owen Glyndwr in the, in the 1400s. So this is where we're going to go to. Um, Aberfrau. Now, I, I love this site. And the reason why I love this site, oh, I've taken off, I've taken us in another direction. This is not a castle, but it's, it's a defended manorial site. So I've chucked that in there because we may miss it over the next few weeks. Like a curveball, I've chucked it in there. There's a bit of a ditch around the outside, some nice walls, some really powerful buildings there on Anglesey. And the site was originally found in 1992 by the Gwynedd Archaeological Trust and excavated in 1995. I had, the, I had the pleasure of actually seeing the excavations um, in 1995, undertaken by the Gwynedd Archaeological Trust. Um, and there you go, Royal Court of the Welsh Princes. Um, I had to stick this in there, I really did. I had to spoil myself. And you can still see the remains there today. Uh, they're a little bit better than this. The church is nearby. You can imagine that the church would be the place where some of the princes of Gwynedd would be buried, where the princes of Cymru would be buried, the last great house of resistance against the Normans. And here we go. Actually, there it is again. There's no proper gateway. It's just an arch um, within the wall itself. I know I said this isn't a castle, it's not like a manorial area, but they could have at least built a gateway if this was Norman. And they would have, but it's not Norman. Um, and you go into this area, and this is what they've tried to reconstruct at St. Bagans. Um, lots of people say they got the reconstruction wrong. Lots of say they got it right. But you know what? Let's say that it's a pretty good reconstruction that they've done at um, St. Fagans. I'm okay with it. Anything reconstructing the past is, is a good idea. It's another... It's another take, as we're doing today. It's another, it's another way of looking at the past. Um, and, I, and I actually thought this was, um, this was a, this was a wonderful um, landscape um, of archaeology. Um, and again, this nice wall going around it and a ditch. Moving on. And Dale, is that you in the background? Yes, the cat. He's soaking wet and wants to sit on my lap. All right then, okay, okay, fair enough. You can switch me off if you like. All right then, I will, I will, I will. What, what I'm gonna do, I'm, Rosamond. Hello. You're, you're joining me now. Oh, me, right. So. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you. I'll um, do my best. How, how are you feeling with how we're going? We're sort of taking, have, have you heard a lot about a lots of these sites or are they new to you? No, this is, this is fascinating stuff. I, I haven't heard about these places and I've got no idea where the mystery castle is. So that's well, going to be, I'll, I'll be quizzing you on that. <laughs> oh, you can't, you can't, you've got to look it up yourself. Um, put okay. it this way, it begins with a D. Oh, right, okay. Well, I actually, I, actually, there's a lot beginning with a D, but it's somewhere in that part of North Wales. So we're, we're back to this. We can see that we, we've got a nice set of ruins here um, within this wonderful landscape. And again, um, you know, what, what, they, what they've tried to do at, um, at St. Fagans, they're, they're basically saying at St. Fagans, you know, we, we used to have this past. It's not really brought to you. And we're going to give a go at reconstructing this. People have been really critical of this and they said, oh, well, you know, um, you know, it's not really the way it should be done and all the rest of it. But Nobody, nobody's got a time machine to know the rights or wrongs. So again, um, when they excavated this site, just a tiny bit of detail, they excavated some really nice um, luxurious pottery um, dating from the 11, 1200s, some really nice pottery. The site was eventually abandoned naturally because the um, Edward I is taken over Anglesey and the whole of North Wales and the princes of Gwynedd are, are, are extinguished. Um, until the time of England, another hundred years ago. Um, and then what we've got, we've got lots of silverware being found at the site and nice lead fishing weights and various things to point to this being a site of at least the palace of Aberfrau, the pal palace of the princes of Gwynedd. Um, and what we're gonna do now, 
I don't want to. I don't want to have um, uh, Martin with me because he'll get very excited. We're going to now look at um, the site of um, Casteth Morgraig. Um, now, Casteth Morgraig is a rather interesting site, in that you need to be taken there um, to know it's there. You can't really. You look on a map, and it's at the back of a pub. Um, I think you. I think it's still private property, so you've got a trespass. But Rosamond, you've been on journeys with me. There's nothing stopping us trespassing, is there? No. Um, on our cloak of invisibility, won't we? Yeah, exactly. Um, so to give you an idea where this is, right? It's not on the overall map of things. So there's Casteth Morgraig, um, and if you want to go down, uh, this is Cardiff. Um, there's Rumney and there's Caffili. So it's it's near Caffili and it's near it's near the center of Cardiff. It's not far away. So why why did the Normans need a castle here if it was Norman? So that's why the arguments are that it's built by maybe one of the lords of, of the old um, landscape of St. Henneth, like the lords of St. Henneth. The, the pre-Norman lords of St. Henneth. This is, this is what the argument is. And to be honest with you, ask me to prove this or disprove this one way or the other. I think, I think the magic's in the images for you to make your, up your own mind. Um, so this is a, this is a reconstruction. Um, this is by Ward. Um, and Rosamond, if I'm, oh. a if I'm a betting man, right, you'll be able to spot one of the reasons why this is classified uh, as a native build castle and not built by the Normans. And it's directly in front of you. What's the clue? The archway, not a gateway. And that's it. Don't say any more, but go, go, say a bit Great. more. Go, go say a bit more. The five towers. And what shape are they? Round. But they're D-shaped. In particular, oh, D-shaped ah, ah. towers, the D-shaped towers. And the other clue, the third clue is, oh, I'm going to bring Dell on this. What's the other clue, Dell, that this is a, a, a native build castle? The tower, the, the round tower in the, this, cent, in the not on the centre, it's on the walls. Yeah, that, that's right. Now, this, it, um, this is a square tower, but it's linked to the curtain walls. That's the other fact I wanted. So you've got the D. You've got the archway and not a gateway. Um, and you've got these towers connected to the curtain wall around the outside. This gives us a big clue. And there's a big space in the middle. This is Ward, Ward did say, but other experts were saying no. Um, and I'm at, you know, if I want to be biased, yeah, I'm going to say this is a native build castle. Uh, so if you want to find out where it is, um, it's Casteth Morgraig. <laughs> uh, this is the pub. Uh, there's the car park. Um, and if you jump over the stile and quickly run across the across to the castle, you'll go through um, the gateway and you'll see these towers. It is a very interesting, enigmatic location. It looks south towards Cardiff. And if the trees weren't sort of in front, you've got another little bit of a, a slope away to the towards the north. Um, and it's, it's again, very odd, very odd, very odd. It's, like to, it's nice to have a bit of oddments. And there we go, there's a bit of a plan. To, and if you look at this, Dell, um, you can see that this, um, these towers are really oddly shaped. They're not exactly D-shaped. Um, and they actually use a local um, undressed um, sandstones, you know, the pennant sandstones, you know, the grey... Um, very um, big grain sandstone. There is dress stone at the site, um, but again, that is the clue. That that's the clue that um, Rosamond spotted. There's no gateway there. It's just an arch um, with doors that open um, uh, inwards. Um, you wouldn't have them opening outwards because it's obvious. So they they open inwards. Um, and these are the clues. These are the clues. And I want you to go away to think either this is Norman or not. But if you think the same way as me and Martin, then that, that's okay by me. Um, and this actually looks towards, this looks south. It's quite, it's quite a drop then. Loads of sheep wandering around this site. And this is what the site looks like today. It's sad. 
Um, it's very overgrown. Um, and there's lots of rubble around because the archaeologist um, John Ward excavated it in 1905, 10 years after the site had been really um, found. Um, this is, um, it's, it, it, it was, it was a very, I, I'm struggling to get my words across because you go there and you feel it's a, it's not Norman. You feel it because, um, forget about Lord St. Kenneth and forget about the declares, forget about all that. It's mentioned in the history of 1315 when there's a rebellion, um, um, the Llewellyn Bren rebellion. Um, not against um, the Declares, but against the, the Dispenser family. Um, um, Llewellyn Brown had actually been um, um, the custodian um, or the um, sub-lord of, of the Lords of Declare. But um, he was kicked out of his job by, by the Dispenser Lords, who had replaced the, the Declares. Um, and this is the last stronghold of that rebellion here. This is where it happened. The castle was pulled down, leveled, and it was erased from history. And you would think, if this was a Norman build castle, it would remain in use, just like Ogmore. But that's for you to make up your own minds. We go on to a few strange sites in a short while, but there you go. Um, if you want to go to the pub, and I think it's changed its names a couple of times. Um, so you've got the park, car park here, and you can just see little bits of the remains of the site here. That's that tower at the back um, that we mentioned. And all the D-shaped towers, you can see it looking towards Cardiff, towards the south, looking north. You can see where the trees are creating the shadows. Um, on the bank as they sort of go um, towards the north. And, and do you know what? We've, um, we had a little bit of a staff meeting today um, and we might actually start doing virtual walks of these sites. Um, we might take one or two of you guys with us and we might do virtual walks, but we haven't worked that out yet. It wouldn't be fair that I take you, Rosamond, because that would be favoritism. <laughs> I'd love to do that then. <laughs> okay, okay, you can do it. You, 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 me, and Dell. You'd love that. Uh, so again, this, this is, this is how it looked. This is a reconstruction. Um, a really big tower, and I'm going to bring this back in when I do castles too, uh, to another castle which was built by the Welsh princes in Gwynedd. Um, but you can see it's, it's got the airs and graces, but there's something not quite right about it. Um, it it's that mentality, I think, that if you, if you manage to get past the gateway, you may as well give up anyway. Um, but the reason why these are circular towers um, is that they can't be undermined, but the square tower can. And this is all built at the same time. Um, running out of breath there a little bit. Um, so moving on. Um, some of the, the, there is a little bit of dress stone there, but lots of it has been taken away. Um, this is towards the gateway area. I'm not calling it a gateway, uh, the door area. Um, and um, they've got a little, some of the dress stones for the little arch there um, that Rosamond pointed out not so long ago. Um, and if you go there, um, you, you get lots of the, lots of the rock is sort of um, grown over and there's lots of mosses on it. It's uncared for, it's unloved. Um, and that, that's not, that's not Mr. Ward himself. That's one of the school children that helped him on the excavation. Um, you can tell this is 1905. He looks like a little, proper little toe rag. Um, <laughs> and I just want to mention something else actually, um, when they're excavating this site, um, archaeologists back at the turn of the 1900s um, would follow walls. They were following wall excavation. So what they, would, what they would do, they would find a bit of wall, they would excavate it, go to a corner, then they would follow it back around, and the stuff in the middle wouldn't be excavated. Um, but when you go there, there's been a lot mucked around with. I would love to archaeologically excavate at this site, and I know where I'd be working. I wouldn't be working on the walls. 
but I'd work smack bang in the middle of one of these D-shaped towers because excavating smack bang in the middle of one of these D-shaped towers is, is, is the place that that's where the roof would have collapsed in first. So you'd have some really nice um, ridge tile. Um, that's where um, when the roof collapsed in, it would take all the floors with it. So you'd have some, some, some really nice artifacts, some nice pottery, you know, to get us nice, give us a nice dating um, and give us a nice indication who was responsible for building this castle. It certainly wasn't that toe rag. I, what I think he's waiting for is, is to, for somebody to find a coin and he's going to run off with it. He obviously goes to a Barry school. <laughs> oh, why? Okay, this is just to throw you. Um, this is, um, this is Casteth Cork. So when anyone actually goes to Casteth Cork, they are reminded, may I say so folks, that Casteth Cork um, is built um, on the, on the thumbprint. Um, when I say a thumbprint, a D-shaped tower, one of those D-shaped towers again, right? On the thumbprint um, of a very small um, native lord's um, castle. Um, it's in the typical type of area where you would find one. In the middle of nowhere, right? Nice views, slightly inaccessible, um, definitely, let's call them Definitely the Welsh, those foreigners. This is the type of place. And when this site was being excavated, the original images from the excavation, um, the, the late 1970s, I think the, the dates are around 1977, somewhere like that. You can see, you can see actually the outlines of Unilia Castle. Uh, and uh, William B uh, Burgess, the architect, is re restylizing this castle uh, for the Marquess of Butte um, alongside um, Cafilthy, Cafilly Castle, um, and Cardiff as well. And I would like to say um, that when you go to Cafilly Castle, all the, all the stone on the outside of Cafilly Castle is not the original stone. It was reconstruct, that's all reconstruction from the um, 1870s. Um, and again, um, I'm going to chuck this in there as well. A Norman castle. But this is what castle, Dell? Oh, I'm not sure of that one. It's near you. We mentioned it in the Glyndua lecture. Come on. Oh. It's, it's not Coity. It's Coity Castle. Oh, yeah, it's built up now, yes. Yeah, it's Coity Castle. There we go. Um, and this is, this site itself is, um, it goes all the way back. You know, even, even when the de Gamages are talking about their ancestors, they're talking about somebody else has built the castle here before the Normans. So, again, that other bit of the lecture that lots of Norman sites like Ogmore um, have earlier native origins. But this is rather odd. And we're not going to spend long on this one. I'm very wary. Uh, that these lectures are only supposed to take an hour with some questions. So the, here we go. Um, this, is, um, this is known as Gwydir Castle. This is a, there's a rather interesting story associated with this. This, is, um, this was purchased in the 1980s. It was a bit of a ruin, um, a bit of a manor house, a bit of a castle. Um, and this yeah. is associated with the Kings of Gwynedd. Um, and this is associated with the Wynne family. Um, and when we, when we think about this site, um, in about 1356, a, a certain Howell um, Ab Coitmoor is responsible for building a castle at this site. And the people who have bought it have lovingly restored this site. And it become a great manor house rather than a castle. Um, but the origins with its links to do with the um, uh, with the princes of, 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 of Gwynedd um, and not to be lost. And you can actually visit this site. And there's Gwydir. It refers to an early Tudor courtyard house um, with garden. But that um, is a native build castle. And they've been excavating there. It's rather interesting. The owners of the site have been undertaking archaeological excavations and they've been undertaking some really nice um, medieval walls. Um, and because Cadu basically thought we're re not really not interested in the site, which is great, they've been able to excavate it and get some really nice information. 
I would like to say that um, there's books on Gwydir Castle. Look at the story of Gwydir Castle. It would make a lecture in its own right. Um, and you'll see that steeped, hidden under those facades of Tudor, underneath those facades of Norman and English, uh, sometimes you see a castle of the old princes of this land staring back at you. As we move on, we actually move on to Abergrin Greggin. Now, Abergrin Greggin is that image that you saw earlier on. And I'm going to show you where Abergrin Greggin is first before we go any further. Abergrin Greggin um, is, a, is along, alongside the A55, um, going from Bangor all the way through to um, 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 Conway, um, Redland, um, all the way over to um, back down to Wrexham. Um, and this is a rather interesting site because it was very controversial. Um, it was very controversial back in the late 1980s um, because the family that the, uh, uh, bought the castle, the, the, the Gibsons, who actually uh, built, bought this site, knew that this was a castle. And that tower is actually a castle, um, is the remaining castle tower, that round tower itself. And they found early footings of it. People said it's nothing to do, um, it's nothing to do with the Welsh princes, but this is directly linked to the princes of North Wales, to the princes of Gwynedd, to the princes of Aberthrow. And there's been a big argument um, between the academics. Um, and some of the academics um, were arguing that this is, this is not the site that could have had a connection with the Welsh princes. It's not a castle site. And other archaeologists excavate and saying, hang on, we've got a circular tower here, a really thick walled circular tower, and we've got curtain walls going off in that direction. And we've got a hall, and we've got a nice well. This is definitely, um, this is definitely um, a site associated with the Welsh princes. Um, but no funding was made available uh, by the, um, it wasn't the Welsh Assembly back then, it was the Secretary of State. Um, otherwise known as Panna Bryn, illustrated in 1811. So if we want to move on a little bit further, um, there's some of the excavations. Um, and it's very near the mound of Panna Bryn as well, which is actually in the background. Uh, so again, we've got archaeological evidence pointing this site within this landscape, connected with that tower that you've just seen, with being a very important missing castle within the history of Cymru. And actually, this is the site that we're going to actually end with today. And we're going to ask if there's any questions. But this site is a site known as Dinis Bran. And where is Dinis Bran? Let's refresh us with the, these castles. Oh, hang on. Dinis Bran. Um, hang on. Here we go. We've missed an image. Actually, one last thing before we go back to Dennis Brown. Sorry for this confusion at the end. That's another image of um, the House of Abergrin Greggin. And it looks really interesting. Um, and this was how it looked um, like in 1811. The House of Penabryn, associated with the Mound of Penabryn and the archaeological ruins that you've actually just seen. So if we go back again. So that's where we're going to end. Dennis Brown. So in other words, we've actually done a good look around uh, Wales. And do you know what? I want to say, I want to tell you that um, when we look at the old oak trees in Wales, um, it brings us back to the landscape of, of Dinis um, Bran. Um, so lots of what we're going to be looking at um, over the remaining weeks. And by the way, um, um, with what I know, um, this course will be going on not for 10 weeks, will be going on for 20 weeks because we will be still teaching online uh, for quite some time. So the reason why I've decided to do Castles 2 is because we're going to be doing this course for quite some time and that means that I can fit a lot more into it. And by the way, um, we will hopefully be, we will actually have a, a bib gorn, which Michelle will be playing in one of the classes, uh, a very old musical instrument 
which um, is a musical instrument like the bagpipes of Scotland, which is native to our land. Right, so let's look at this site. Okay, and go back to Abba Gringregin. There it is. Isn't this very similar to lots of the native build sites that we've just, that we've been looking at? Very similar to Dolphorwin Castle. Um, that you've got this sort of wall around the outside, these sort of higgledy piggledy towers, um, a little bit of a gate there, um, and it's on a bit of an escarpment. It sort of overlooks this landscape. This is near the Alessig Pillar. Um, near, very near Church Castle, obviously that's a very different date, um, but it's within the richness, of the rich tapestry um, of this landscape, very rocky. It's got its own rock supply. You don't need to quarry any stone from this site. Um, and again, look at these nice little bits or these nice windows um, that, that you can actually see. But I actually wanted to show you uh, um, in connection with Dolphorin, uh, not Dolphorin, uh, Droysloin Castle. I will get those images for Droysloin Castle that I was going to show you this week. Occasionally, when I'm setting the classes up, um, my computer doesn't like to use um, certain images. So um, I've got to make sure that they're actually there to show you next week. But again, um, wonderful Dennis Brown again. And the last image, again, looking at that. Um, so you don't see these great um, gateways. You see little towers surrounded a, surrounding a great large um, courtyard area. Um, and this was actually constructed by the Princess of Powys. Um, by a certain Gruffydd Milo. Um, and this is one of those castles that held out until 1282. Um, on the death of Llewellyn the Last, Llewellyn ap Gruffydd, on the 11th of December, this castle decided to give up the, give up the ghost um, and surrendered to the armies of Edward I. On mentioning Edward I, we're not going to finish on mentioning Edward I. We're going to look at one more. We're going to look at this map one more time. So I would say that um, next time we actually come to this, I, I would like to look at um, Denevor. It's a nice site. I would like to look at some of those um, ca castles um, within Gwynedd. Dolweddolan Castle, Dolbadan Castle, Dinis Emrys. We'll look at Cricketh. And next time, we visit Dennis Powers Castle. Yay. So what I'd like to do, um, I would like to get me back up on the screen. Um, and I would like to um, put everyone's mics on. And I would like to have a free for all. Um, and I would like to say, um, Robin, it, it's great that you've joined us tonight. Um, and uh, so you're new to us tonight. Um, Ellen is due to us, new to us tonight. So thanks for joining us. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to have some questions. I'm going to unmute you all. What the hell? Strange noises in the background. Right. So um, what we're going to do, Robin, have you got anything you'd like to add tonight? Um, no, I'm just I'm just listening and learning. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. We've also got another fellow American here. Pat, have you got anything you'd like to say? No, I enjoyed it. It's really good. I like good. The map. that map. Um, that map shows all the castles. Is good. That's what you need. That's what you need. Um, what about uh, what about Ellie and Catherine? Anything you'd like to say? Uh, Eleanor. Eleanor, sorry. Okay. Oh, oh, there's no, there's Ellie. There is actually Ellie here. So there's Catherine oh, and nice. Eleanor. Okay. Sorry, okay. sorry. Yeah. So it's Ellie, Catherine, and Eleanor. Anything you'd like to say? Which one? All three of you can talk at the same time. No. If you want. <laughs> Shall I go first? Shall I go, go first? You go first. Go first. Okay. Two things. Um, am I allowed to say what that castle was in North Wales that you were talking about, or is that are you keeping that secret until next week? Um, do, do we allow her to tell you guys? Yeah, I think um, I've guessed yeah. anyway. Oh, go on. Actually, Del, oh. Del, Del and... Um, Dol, Dolbardan. Dolbardan. Love it. It's, a, it's in the Hanveris um, Pass and it's uh, just above a hotel we stayed in last year, the Royal Victoria Hotel, but uh, we weren't there long enough to go up and have a look at it. Um, the other one is um, Drisloin Castle. 
Um, when you go down next time, I wouldn't mind if you do, if you are going, you know, accompanying you. Um, it was part of um, um, my uncle's farm, Drisloin Farm, and I used to stay on the farm as a um, you know as a teenager, and uh, I just never went up. I never up to the farm. I was riding um, his pony around the farm and uh, enjoying myself, but uh, um, I just took it for granted and thought, you know, one of these days I will go up there. Um, I, I think, what, you know, I explained earlier on um, about um, it, it's likely now that um, the social distancing rules will be in place for quite some time. No, and no. Um, and yeah. if, we, if we do any visits like that, we'll probably say, um, everyone's gonna to have to go in their own cars and yeah, yeah. Uh, they'll be very but we are thinking about that so uh, Eleanor you will be one of the first that we'll take with us so Catherine okay. anything you'd like to say yeah no I don't think so I'm I'll just learning <laughs> okay what about are you Ellie um no thank you it was very very interesting <laughs> thank you and and you, what we could do we could put your dad um in the keep what about you Goff I was uh, I was thinking about the difference between the uh, original Welsh prince's castles and the uh, Norman castles and the Norman castles were these huge statements of power <clears throat> uh, but the Welsh castles didn't seem to be like that they were more uh, quieter is that my right? Do you want me to explain why and do you know what your your um I, I love the words you used there they, they, they were nice words and um and actually, when I can give you an example, um, when when the Norman uh, de Londres, de Londres, de London family took over Ogmore Castle, they found a castle uh, at the bottom of a valley, um, below an escarpment, alongside the river, right, completely isolated, and it didn't have any airs and graces. And the Normans built the site there, and it turned out to be a really bad site to build a castle, because the Norman castles were there for statements. The, the, even though the Welsh castles are not pr in practical locations, they do have practicalities. Um, th there's another reason why the Welsh castles are where they are. Uh, they, they don't necessarily need to be defensive. The, the giveaway bit is, even though they're in defended localities, their gateway gives it away. They're, they don't have these ornate gateways. So there's other reasons why they're there. They're not there for the statements of the control that you see in regards to the Norman reasons for being here. Good. Um, Del, Rosamond, and then we're going to bring in uh, Pam and Martin. Del, Rosamond? Really interesting, um, especially the differences between the two styles of... Um building so something that I'm you know when I'm able to go back out and look at some of these older castles and ruins it's something that I'm going to sort of try and look and see if I can pick some of those differences out. That would be good and Rosamond no anything? Yes, I'd agree with Del I'm looking forward to going back out and having a look around these places I've been to Dinis Bran which was was fabulous so you know yeah. I've seen it in a different light. Good um, um Good. Also, sort of agree in there with Goff about the, the difference of the buildings. That, that's fascinating. That's good. Surprised that they built that one castle with where there wasn't a well. And I wonder if they did that as a folly, you know. Um, now, that would be thinking about like the Normans. I think what happened is that um, Llewellyn Ap Griffith um, built the castle in 1273 in response to what the English were doing, right? He was doing what the English were doing in a way that covers everything that you've just said. Um, usually, but it was built typically like a native built castle. So you've got all those contrasts. It struggled. Um, and Pam, before Martin wants to put his bit in there. Um, I noticed that the Welsh built castles or Cymru built castles are always on a hill. So they wouldn't necessarily need defences, would they? And they the don't. Gateway? Exactly. That's another, that's another way of looking at it. Um, and Peter um, and Martin. Martin, let rip. Great lecture, Carl. Uh, a refreshing look at the castles of Cymru compared to the usual Cadu and establishment, typical bias focus on normal castles. Um, it's all focused on Normans, and it's not right. What you've done tonight is brilliant. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, and it, just, it just portrays a sad state of neglected native castles of, of Cymru. 
Mm. Exactly. Um, Mulgraig, definitely native, 100%. Um, and can you, you know what we're going to do? Peter, have you got anything you want to say? Because I want to I wanna bring Martin. We're going to have a little discussion on Mark, Mulgraig. Anything you want to say, Pete? Well, only just that the, uh, the castles where they had no well, they probably had a water supply nearby. And as they were not required for defence, uh, the water, the local water supply could be fetched quite simply and they didn't necessarily need a well. And as it was built up on that uh, very high, looked like man-made uh, hill, um, th they couldn't get deep enough to get to the water table anyway. There, there, there's lots to be said, but you went to Canary Kenning with me and there was a weird well at that site. Yes, um, yes. but it went my... down very, very, very low into the ground. Exactly, it did, it did, it did. Um, Martin, you've got, you've got a couple of minutes now to discuss with me, um, Castleth Morgraig. Um, so go for it. Yeah, well, the architecture, it's just, it's just, it's just, where it's placed, it's on top, it's on top of the hill, the providence of that, you've got the D-shaped towers, you've got the gateway, you've got the, the stairwells, not internal to the, to the walls, like to the towers also, sorry, the external. Yes. It's just 100% 100, 100 Welsh car, and it is. And if, if you go back to your map, do uh, the map. Do the map of all the castles you got. Oh right. Okay. Okay. Um, let's. Uh, oh, there we go. Got it. Go for it. Yeah. Glamorgan. There's a batch of castles missing off off that map. There is. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is Castle of Norse, Kai Castles down neath. Dinas Powys. Clanilath Castle. Point Castle. I can get get from from where Evo Bach lost his raid on Cardiff Castle. Yeah. The Morgan is just obliterated with that. It's, it's not even representative of, of the Welsh native castles in the Morgan. Um, and, and, I, and actually, the one thing. Saddens me. Uh, it does sadden me. And do you, do you, know, do you know what? Um, you don't get maps with Casteth Nos on. If we just focus, forget about all the others. Casteth Nos, we showed you that last week. Casteth Nos is a wonderful breathing revitalizing situation when you go there it's got everything that you need and and do you know what when actually we may need castles number three as well but i but i think we'll do castles two dinis powers casteth nos del Barden, um dol Wadan, and cricket will like, be actually in it so um that's what we'll do next time and i just give a tip to anybody who wants to look up his castle shown tonight there's um there's a good book called the castles of the welsh princes and it's by Paul, Paul R. Davis, and it's all about the Welsh castles. It's, re it's really good. And it captures a, a lot of what Carl spoke about tonight. Castles of the... Castles of Welsh Princes, Paul R. Davis. Castles of Welsh Princes. Excellent. Paul, Paul R. Davis. So what we're going to say, I believe this was um, really good tonight. Um, thank you very much for joining me. I'm looking forward to... Um, next week um and i'll just remind just just two reminders of things what we're doing next week um next week we will be looking at um some of the coins associated with your bar um the coin associated with your bar and one of the other welsh princes we'll be looking at um some some actual games um some traditions that we've lost um within the landscape of of cymru I would like to mention those that are joining uh, Archaeology Cymru on Saturday night. Um, you know the procedure. Um, contact me. Let me know what you're doing if you're not registered for it. Those that are joining my classes tomorrow, I will see you tomorrow um, and next Tuesday. Um, have you all enjoyed tonight? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Fast. Thank you very much. Stop. <laughs> if, if anyone if anyone would like to um, have a chat afterward they're welcome if not i'm going to say goodbye to you all name by name nice to see you again eleanor catherine pat ellie uh, martin pam robin we haven't seen you before um rosamond dell um and goff and and peter nice to see you all i'll see you all very soon take care thanks very much carl bye, bye. 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 Nostar. 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 I like that. Nostar. Nostar. Gwell e chi eto. Um, dim problem no, I go to the pen in in Arthur Hogian. Night night guys. Night night. Hello. Oh, I, 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 nobody's joined us. Nobody's staying behind tonight to talk to me.
Um, who's going to be left? Ellen is still there. We're still in with Martin. I'm still here. Okay. Robin, are you going to join us for a little bit? Or are you going? <laughs> Martin, Martin, I thought that was, um, that was really good. Ex excellent. It was excellent. excellent. It was good. It was good. It was good. It stirs, stirs up the Welsh passion, like, you know, when it's, I, it's, like I said, it's refre refresh and change from biased Norman focus of the castles of Wales, because we've done it a long time before the Normans did exactly. in Wales. Exactly, we were. And, and, and Robin, um, you missed the lecture last week, but you, are you aware that you um, can see it online? No, I'm not aware. Right, so what I'll do, Robin, I will send you the link. Thank you very much. That would be, I was thinking of recording it or something, and that was be very interesting. This, this, is, this is actually recorded, so um, um, there, there are bits of it that ain't recorded, but um, the, the main, main chunk of the lecture is recorded, so I will send you the link. Um, as you're one of our, you've got another eight weeks to go with us. So if you want to, if eight weeks um, you do, you really like to see what we're doing, then we've obviously got, um, we'll be doing another, another 10 of these after that. Great. I'm interested. Brilliant. And we've also got Saturday as well, where we do ghost stories um, um, every single, um, every single Saturday as well. So I, I can send you the link for that. Oh, oh please. Yes. Anything. So um, I, I'm not sure what time it is in the States. Uh, well, I'm in California and it's about seven minutes to one. And the other lady, um, Pat, um, she actually lives over here, but she's from California as well. Small world. I, you might know her. <laughs> <laughs> Cal California is bigger than England. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, so... Um, um, <laughs> Anything you want to ask me, Robin, before before you go? No, I'm just I'm just learning. I'm just soaking it all up. I'm missing everybody else's questions. Excellent, excellent. Okay, then, Robin. Well, I'm going to say good night to you then. Thank you very uh, much. No, no, Robin. I'll get this link and stuff over to you now. It's going to be the first thing I do after I've finished. Brilliant. Um, thank you. Thank you, Robin. Night, night. Nostachi. Shalom, Mike. Night, night. Night, night. Um, and, and, and Martin, um, um, I, uh, Gareth missed a good lecture tonight. Yeah, he's been he's been flat out all day doing a bit of work, and he's uh, he, he was too tired. He said so. Do, do you know? Do you know what? Yeah, yeah, I, I can imagine. Do you know he's, what? I, he's, go on. He's been investigating and working on a piece of history. He's busting to share with you, and he's he's almost done that, and he'll be having it over to you in the next couple of days. So it's, it's really interesting stuff what he's done. So. I, I, don't give me any clues. I can, no, I, probably, I can probably not guess, but I might be able to guess. Do you know? <laughs> do you know? Do you know? Do you know what? I, I can't. Michelle, I said to Michelle today. I said, um, I don't think I'll be going back teaching in rooms and stuff. And she said, she basically said, yeah, it's good. Because because what about three months ago, Michelle was saying because we we're, we're eventually going to be moving to West Wales, right? That's what we're saving for. And she said, how are you supposed to teach in South Wales? Well, a month later, this happens, and I'm still teaching in South Wales. Um, and I'm thinking, well, th this has been quite fortuitous, to be honest with you. Are you going to West Wales? We don't know. We, we want to buy ah. some land in West Wales, but... Um, Fantastic. Yes. We, it, you never know. It might, be, it might be the ruins of a manor or a castle. Oh, brilliant. Might be Dolbarden Castle. That's the book. Dol Dolbarden, look. <laughs> Hang on. I, I think I've got that book. That came out about... Um, that came out about three or four years ago, didn't it? I don't know. I've, I've got that book. Is it by Sutton Publishing? The Lolfa Publishing. It's a Welsh publisher. I, th I, I do think I've actually got it, though. I, I think it's, it, yeah, it's a nice book. So, um, so we're going to do some really strange stuff next week. <laughs> why hey, not? Um, native Welsh coins. Yes. There, there's the, the, yeah we're doing that as well that what we'll do is start off with the native welsh coin there's actually we know of about we know of the huldar coin Ma um, mask and mask and Ledig. is there any mask and Ledig coins not not that we're aware of this is the problem most of these sites have not been excavated most of them haven't most of them haven't been excavated so we're not going to know are we that's the point 
the, the thing is, the thing is, we're, we're talking about a Welsh prince, right? So, so did I give, make up some figures in my head? So, say for example, um, we know for example a mint, um, a mint can produce about twenty-two thousand coins a day, right? Um, only if there's silver available. A Welsh mint wouldn't produce anywhere near that, and there wouldn't be enough silver around. And even if coins were being produced, they'd be produced in small numbers. So where they're going to be produced, they're going to be lost on native sites and they're never going to be found again. So. You're going to do a presentation on the Druids? Your favourite subject? <laughs> do, you know, do you know, actually, do you know, do you know what I should do? I should. I, it I, is archaeological evidence. Hang on. Shut up. What we should do is that we should do Druids, Arthur and Celts. Do you, know, do, you know, do you know one thing? One thing is that I, I never knew until last year that one of the things that Blackett and Wilson absolutely hates is the Celts, right? But, but obviously, I absolutely help, hate the Celts for another reason, in the sense that it's, Welsh it's, Celts. it's just a name. Yeah, it's a tag with Welsh or Celts. It's just a name. Um, but the Druids thing, um, that will be an interesting one because the only person to mention the Druids in, in Roman writing is, um, is I think, Tacitus. Tacitus. He yes, he mentions them once on Anglesey, right? But it would be good to do that, and it would be good to do Arthur at the same time. But I tell you what, I wouldn't put the Arthur lecture on, on um, Monica's website. <laughs> she, she has turned against me half a dozen times. Good night. But I'm saying nothing more. On that note, Martin, anything you want to add before we go? No, great lecture. Looking forward to next week. So am I, and I'll see you then. Get Gareth to contact me. Are you, are you not joining us on Saturday then? You're playing your games? Yeah, yeah, we're doing Zoom stuff uh, with family and friends. Good. And uh, is Evan enjoying the, um, the, the Wednesday afternoons? <laughs> Did he tell you what we did this week? No, it sounded like he's having a, a whale of a time. I could hear him from downstairs. Uh, we, uh, I, I, I don't know. We, we were, um, I think we were all honorary idiots um, uh, today. I, I think um, it was good fun. Um, and we, we, we did the arche archaeological evidence of zombies. He loved that. <laughs> <laughs> but on that note, I will, see you, I will see you next week then. Right. Cheers. Night night, Martin. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.